Hey folks, it's Shane from Form TV. Today is New Car Day. Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us. So for those of you new to this channel, this is my little space on YouTube where I try to put electric power into fun and interesting cars. And today we've got a new car. Um, to call it a new car day is probably a little bit, stretching it a little bit, uh, because number one, the car is not new, and number two, I've actually owned it for a little while. Um, but it's new to the channel, so we'll go with that. Um, yeah, I'm not even going to try and give you a preamble or something. Well, let's go look at the car, and then I'll tell you a bit about it. So this is my 1976 Volkswagen 1303 Carmen Cabriolet and it's the new project on the channel. Let's take a look around. So that's the outside. Let's take a look inside. So as, as you'll have noticed, the car is a lefty. Uh, it's left-hand drive, not originally from the UK. Um, and it's actually kind of got, well, an interesting history to me, maybe not to everyone else, but I'll tell you a little bit about it. So this car has actually been in my family for close to 20 years, over 20 years actually. Um, I really got into cars when I was kind of 16, 17. And my first car was a Beetle. It was, a pile of junk, um, cost me a few hundred quid, few hundred pounds, yeah, Irish pounds at the time, it was before the Euro, and myself and my dad went and picked it up uh, from a bit outside Dublin, drove it home, and you could see the road through the floor and that sort of thing. 
Um, but eventually we got it up to a pretty decent state. Um, I haven't managed to find any pictures actually, which I'm a bit annoyed about, but it was, we took a brown 1972 Beetle um, with not a lot of charm and turned it into a pretty cool blue and white two-tone mid-60s looking Beetle um, that I could cruise around with and I did for, for quite a few years. But it kind of sparked a bit of a, a Beetle fan in my family. Uh, and basically my dad decided he saw one of these for sale, well this one for sale, um, in the newspaper just before my mom's birthday and decided to buy it for her and um, surprise her with it. So that was back in 1999 and yeah, he, he bought it. We went out to to one of the really posh suburbs of South Dublin and bought it off this, this chap in a ridiculously big house. Uh, the guy had basically imported it some years earlier from Italy and done it up to a degree. It was still Still had the original interior, but he'd had it painted like a kind of dark metallic grey, I think it was an Alfa Romeo colour and that. But yeah, we um, picked it up, drove it back home and uh, yeah, it was my mum's daily driver for oh, a good 10 or 15 years. Um, and then it was, my dad was driving it for, just to go run some errands and the engine caught fire. Um, no idea why. Never managed to find out why. Uh, he got it over to the side of the road, emergency services came, they managed to put it out and all that, but it had done quite a bit of damage to the paintwork, it had um, messed up the, the hood and that sort of thing. So th there was quite a lot of work that needed to be done on the car to get it back to where it should be. And the, the insurance company paid out in that. And um, yeah, my dad took it to basically get it stripped back to the bare metal and um, all that but in doing so they had to basically take the entire car apart so everything except the dash was taken out of the interior all the rubber was taken off um, windows were taken out the hood was toast anyway so that was just cut off the, the frame um, and the car was media blasted back to the bare metal uh, before being painted in its original Volkswagen black um, and then my dad decided he was going to take on the, the rebuild process himself um, and a few years ago he decided actually you know what this this is going to take too long me trying to do it I've got other things I want to do in, around the garden around the house and that sort of thing so um, my parents gave it to me as a as a birthday present a few years ago and my wife arranged for it to be to be shipped over here so it ended up in here in the UK and was yeah had all the parts but none of them were attached and and i've spent the last few years kind of getting it up to to the point where it's almost drivable um but I've kind of been doing bits and pieces and other things get in the way but i've decided now i'm going to actually get it number one drivable on the road and i guess secondly in a state that i feel good driving it um so I love driving these cars. I mean, you know, I've had Beatles, my first car. Actually, the engine in this one was taken out of my old car um, in order to be able to, to make it mobile because obviously the previous one had, had gone up in flames. But yeah I, yeah, I don't mind driving this a little bit, but you can smell the petrol when you're driving and it, it just doesn't tie in with my, my world view anymore. So I'm, I'm going to electrify it. But the, the kind of driver as to why I'm doing it now and, and starting it now is it's been a tough uh, end of 2020 early 2021 have, have been tough for for me and my family um, you know the, the big blow was a few weeks ago and my dad actually passed away so I'm kind of doing this as maybe a tribute to him in honor of him just to help me remember him um, you know we work together on on my car and, and even doing things on this one and I, I want to yeah I want to do that again with with this one and take it through to the the next millennium the next century so that's kind of why this car why now um, I, know, I know some of you will be thinking well but Shane your channel's called performance EV how are you going to tie that in well as I see it there's two ways we do performance in cars one 
is you get a car that's already got the performance built in um, and like I'm doing with the Porsche so with that I'm trying to maintain the the level of power that it had and the other option is to get something that doesn't have a huge amount of power and add more power to it so you know in every car scene you know every subgenre every uh, kind of model specific group um, there's always ways and means of adding power to the car and that's what I'm going to do with this one so this being an Italian being originally from Italy um, the tax laws there at the time I don't know if they're still the same were quite uh, punitive on larger engines and at that stage 1600 cc was a large engine uh, so uh, this came with a 1200 cc now if you're to buy the same car in the uk in ireland in the states at the time i'm pretty sure they only came with the 1600. so i'm kind of in the middle of doing the work at the back so we are missing a little bit of the engine but don't worry, I do have it. This is just to keep things secure. So this, came, this one came with the 1200 and basically it's got the sum total of about 34 brake horsepower. And when I first got into, into Beatles, um, I was a young guy, so Actually, only 34 brake horsepower was a good thing because it made the insurance, I won't say affordable, it was never affordable. It was less painful. Um, if I'd had anything more than that, I probably wouldn't have been able to afford to insure the car. So um, 34 horsepower was spot on. But I always lusted after the big bore, the kind of big block, this is in Beetle terms, big block engines that people were building and you would everything up to kind of mad drag engines but the kind of best street performance engine for everyday use was always the people went around with the 1776. This is usually based on a 13 or 1600 um, cc case and just you know bigger pistons, bigger barrels, um, twin port, heads and all this sort of thing to to make it more more powerful and those generally tend to push out somewhere around between 70 and 90 horsepower which is for something as light as this is actually you know good good fun so that's kind of what i want to do with this one get to similar power levels but basically do it electric um, effectively doubling the horsepower of the car uh, enjoy the kind of electric drive torque delivery and that sort of thing and just yeah give it a, a bit of a boost so yeah so that's kind of the car and yeah why i'm why i'm doing this um so i'm going to do this one slightly differently to the porsche so the porsche i'm going to continue working on um but that one i kind of was doing the electric conversion at the same time as all sorts of other jobs that were needed on the car and that in part just kind of happened because i thought there was le going to be less to do when actually it turned out there was quite a lot of things the car needed. Um, this one I know what's needed so the plan is to approach this slightly differently and it kind of ties into my vision for the channel is to show people different ways of doing electric conversions so we might as well approach this one differently and give you a different a different flavour. So what I'm going to do with this one is get the car working properly um, so that means get the engine running again so I can drive it around the place so I can give it a proper shakedown and you know make sure things like the brakes, suspension, um, all the equipment like that is working properly um, and has been kind of run in and all that sort of thing. And I also want to try and do a few mods to the car just to make it a little bit more usable in modern traffic. Um, you know all the cars around you are moving much faster these days, they can stop much faster so I don't want this to be too much of a liability. So I've already done some work and I'll, I'll probably do another video um, where I take you through all the little jobs that I've done so far. Um, you know, extra equipment that I've put in, things that I've modernized, um, changes I've made to brakes, suspension, that sort of thing, just to make the car a bit more um, 
yeah, a bit more usable in, on modern roads. But that means I'm gonna reach a point where the car is usable, and at that point I want to convert it to electric as quickly as possible. In order to do that, I need to have the components together. So my plan is, both from a project perspective and in terms of videos turning up on the channel, that I'll be working in parallel with doing jobs on the car, I'll be getting the things together to do the EV conversion. So getting the motor, getting the inverter, getting them running, uh, getting the battery, getting the battery put into, make, made into a battery box or boxes potentially just because of the way space is in this car. Um, to And get them all built out outside of the car, but do it in such a way that when the time comes, I can just take the engine out and put the electric drive in, bolt, bolt everything up, and off we go. This means I have to take a very different approach uh, to the components. Uh, it'll be something similar to what I've started to do on the battery box, which is where I'm thinking ahead, planning ahead, coming up with um, the design based on strict measurements and knowing what space I'm working with, rather than just trying to fit things in and then work around that. Um, so it'll be it'll be a good kind of continuation of the, the effort that I've put in on the battery box kind of taking that to the next level um, So from a video perspective, it means it would be a combination of kind of getting this car up and running doing the mods on it and then also getting the um, Getting the the electric components up and running so I have some of the components already uh, we'll start to pull through them they're different ones to what I've used previously so the leaf motor and gearbox aren't really an option here I want to do similar to what I'm doing the Porsche I want to do direct drive um, rather than running it through the transaxle uh, just to make sure the components are as compact as possible and I've got as much space as possible for batteries basically so what I'm going to do is um, yeah to get get these new components do similar to what I did when I first started the channel and take a you know an in-depth look at a few different components get them running on the bench um, then start getting things like you know mounting plates and uh, adapters for the um, drive shafts and that sort of thing uh, made and yeah just build up a a kit almost of components that I can then just bolt in and then we'll do I don't know how long the series will take but try and basically convert the car as quickly as possible uh, you know can I do it in a day or a weekend or something like that um, so that's the plan how will it go I have absolutely no idea um, but I hope you'll join me for it anyway and, and see how it goes um, so yeah we'll, we'll end up on the channel with a few different things going on and I hope the variety will you know keep people interested so I'll be working continuing to work on the Porsche uh, continuing the work on the battery box working on this to get it up and running and doing mods on it and then um, looking at EV components and um, getting them necessary so this is a slightly should be a slightly easier conversion um, because with a motor inverter and battery along with the necessary controls are kind of the things I need I don't have to worry about brake boosters I don't have to worry about power steering um, this car didn't have any of that don't have to worry about aircon so yeah um, should be simple right so here we have it this is our our new project our I guess electric kind of street sleeper beetle um, I want to give it enough power that it'll be fun to drive, that maybe I can surprise a few people at the traffic light Grand Prix, um, make it a lot more environmentally friendly to drive than it currently is. So that means you know during summer and that top down can just be daily driven without, without any worries and without feeling guilty about polluting the atmosphere. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited to, to kind of get it out there and, and get it moving again. Um, and I hope you'll yeah, I hope you'll you'll join me for it. But yeah, um, thanks for joining me on this, and I'll uh, see you soon.